How y'all doing? Doll back here again, and this this time it's time to instead of use Go code to generate schemas, time to use schema to generate Go code. And we're going to do that with this nifty little package called SQL Boiler. Um, if you read here, it says it's a data for, database first ORM, or as I, as I kept saying in a few other videos, schema first ORM. Meaning, as I said, as I mentioned, uh, you use the database schema to generate all the, the, the ORM for you rather than you, rather than you writing the ORM, which then generates the, the, the schema and the migration. Uh, and you also notice that this just, this does not handle migrations itself. It says to make use of another tool to do that. Um, so that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, before we get started, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't to see more of more go tutorial stuff, uh, if you'd like to support the channel or, uh, also, the source code for this it will be in the description down below. Uh, so, and that's the plug. We okay. So, they kind of go on here about like why they made this. Apparently, it's staying. It stemmed from having to migrate a Rails database. Woo! I can only imagine. Um, and I'm not really going to get too into this. You can you know read this if you want. Uh, things to note that I think are important. Um, more Go like feel active record like productivity so very uh, the api generated from the code is kind of more active record ish uh very performance um type safe and uh again uh, and because this code is generated uh you have pretty nice auto completion um there's just a bunch of there's a the features again you can read them over if you want um makes is context aware um has hooks can make use of common timestamp fields that are normally on database tables like created at, updated at, and deleted at. Uh, relationships makes use of those. Can eager load, write, do raw SQL queries, you know, the whole shebang. And presently it supports Postgres, uh, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, SQL Lite, and CockroachDB, which is interesting. Um, and there's a small taste, uh, but we're going to do this ourselves, basically. Um, I actually, they give you like a, a test schema to use this on, like a, a, an example structure. And I actually put that into a, a SQLite database and gave it a few rows. So if we look at uh, tables, you'll see we have four tables. Uh, Jets, languages, pilot languages, and pilots. Uh, pilot languages is obviously a joint table between pilots and language. And if we look at the schema for say, uh, pilots, you'll see that it just has an ID and a name. Um, if we select Blair from pilots, there's only just four in there. There's Bob, Jim, Janet, and Jane. Okay. Uh, keep that in mind because we're going to, you know, use this to make sure that when we use our generated ORM code that it's giving us what we think it's supposed to be. So in order to start using SQL Boiler, you have to install it first. And to do that, you would run, I think it's go get, or no, it's, yeah, it, it, kind of tells you to turn off the whole Go module thing so that it installs as like a, a global executable because it's meant to be used that way. Uh, because you you use it, you, you run it uh, like a like a normal command. Uh, it's probably making use of Cobra or something if I had to guess. And uh, it depending on what the command you give it, it generates the code uh, depending on whether it's like what types of database you're told to use. Uh, so that's how you get it set up. And then in order to use it, you need to give it a configuration file. And by default, it looks for this thing called sqlboiler.toml. Uh, there's, they talk about this in the, in the readme, there's some examples, but here's mine. Um, you can, all, there, there's different sections you can set here for the different database types. As you'll see, I'm making use of SQLite and I'll, all you need here is the path to the file, the, the SQLite file. And there, I'm turning on wipe. What wipe does is whenever you run SQL Boiler, it gets rid of all the old generated code and then recreates it anew. They recommend in their readme that you do this when you're regenerating the code uh, because they don't they don't do any diffs or anything. So this just makes sure that you get like the the most up to date and there's nothing left over. Um, it also will generate tests for you to make sure that everything being generated uh, like will behave correctly with your database. But for the sake of this, I'm ignoring them so it doesn't just clutter the uh, directory that gets generated. So now that this has been set up, all we have to do to generate our code is run SQL boiler. And then the uh, 
I think this is the name of the the the, the database you're trying to connect to, and it like looks for the, looks for that type of database in the config. I'm going to run this and. Okay, didn't give me an error, but didn't say anything either. Uh, but if we look at our directory now, now there's this directory here called models that wasn't there before. And if we look in here, there's some um, couple of files here that are kind of specific to SQL Boiler, but then you'll notice there's three files that match up one-to-one -one with our um, non-join tables. That's that's important to keep in mind. And if we're just going to like just peruse one of these real quick, we're not really like get into the weeds because there's there's a lot of boilerplate code here, man. It generates a lot of stuff. You'll notice that this pile of struct has the same properties that our, our table did. And then these, I believe, are reused for like relations and stuff like that. We're not, yeah, not gonna get into it. Like this is a lot of code, man. Like if you go down through here, this one file has 1200 lines in it, bro. That's a lot of fucking code. And there's a couple of uh, convenience functions here. Like you'll notice right here, here's a function to check if a pilot exists. And you pass in a context, um, a interface type that they call context executor, which is basically like, it can be a database connection, uh, a transaction that's been started. Uh, you can go look at the, the docs to read that stuff. And then the ID that you're looking for. And it just, this is basically like a quick way to say, does this, the, is there a row in my pilot table that has this ID? You know, just, just a convenient way to check that. Again, if you want to look at this, go, go generate the code against one of your databases and go go ahead, go crazy. Uh, so we're gonna back out of there. We want to actually interact with this shit now. So we're gonna go into main. And I, I have a little boilerplate already here um, where I'm importing the SQLite driver to be able to interact with SQLite. Um, I'm opening the file and I'm creating a context that I'm gonna pass into all these um, functions. Uh, Cause all these functions that are attached to these uh, structs that are generated, uh, there's, kind of two types there's i believe i believe what they kind of call like query modifiers and then there's finishers the finishers re uh, require two arguments uh the a context to pass in and a uh, a database point so we have this up now let's actually start messing with some of our things shall we uh, let's look at those pilots so we're gonna do pilots and I'm throwing the errors away, obviously, when you're do if you're using this for real, don't throw the errors away. I'm gonna do uh, models, cause that's the package name that was generated. And I'm actually going to say, no wait, stop it. Bring in the thing, do it, pilots. Okay, there's a there's our auto completion. And you'll notice that we have a lot of things here that are related to our tables. So I'm gonna do uh, P-I-L-O-T-S, yeah. And I'm gonna save this so it brings the thing in, okay. And let's get more auto completion in. Okay, so here's our finishers. You know, notice that the finishers, as I mentioned, look very similar to some of the stuff you do with Active Record on Rails. There's all count, delete all, one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so let's do uh, let's do all. I gotta pass in my context in my DB, and let's just loop over these pilots and see what they look like. So we're gonna do it for bleh. Uh, P equals range over pilots. I'm gonna do FMT print line, or yeah, print line, uh, printf, just printf. Uh, pilot info percent plus V, new line, and P. So we're gonna run this, and you see we get our four pilots. You'll notice that these are pointers in here and they have their IDs and their names. Okay, cool. Uh, these are set to nil. I think you have to actually load them. Uh, this, I'm pretty sure R is used in relation to like when there's actually a relation or something, but we'll, we'll get that. Uh, so let's look at something else. Let's look at, um, let's look at our jets. We do jets, nothing equals models, very similar jets, dot all, context, db. Uh, and then when we do for blank j equals range over jets, uh, fmt print f jet info percent plus v line. Okay. So let's see what see what jets we got in here. Um, here's our IDs. Uh, each one has a pilot. So there's a pilot ID that's a foreign key to one of these pilots. Age, a name, and a color, and then the same stuff that's usually here. 
Um, so we notice that there's two jets here that have the same color. Let's see if we can um, interact with them and only get specifically the, the white jets. Um, they say in the documentation that if you're going to start using the query modifiers, that you do a dot import. And the reason they, they say to do a dot import is because otherwise you're going to do a whole lot of qm dot where, qm dot and, qm dot limit, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so if you want to do that, you know, you feel free to go right ahead. We're going to do github.com slash volatile tech SQL boiler before queries qm. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to have like too many um, query modifiers. Let's say, let's say, let's let's do this now. We're gonna do jets nothing equals models dot jets. And now I'm gonna pass in some some modifiers here that are going to uh, change our query that gets generated. So I'm gonna do qm dot, and if we do auto completion, oh boy, there's a pretty much everything that you would normally do with a SQL query and joins group by having or etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm gonna do where. And then we gotta pass in our query. So I'm gonna do where color is equal to in the placeholder. And I'm gonna say white. And then we're gonna do all passing in context in DB. So let's, I'm just gonna copy this down here. Oops, get here. Thank you. So let's run this now. And theoretically speaking, when we loop over this new slice of jets, we should get uh, only two of them because there's only two of them that are white. Uh, yep, we only have those two those two ones right now. Uh, so let's do something else. Let's say uh, maybe we only want excuse me, we only want two of the pilots, right? So we're gonna do kind of like a extremely small version of pagination. I'm gonna say uh, pilot nothing equals models dot oops pilots. And I'm going to use the uh, qm dot limit, and I only want two. And the qm dot offset of zero, I think it's zero by default, but yeah, you get the idea. And your ctx dot db. And if we loop over those again, this time we should only get two. Let me run this, and you'll see that we only get the first two results. So theoretically speaking, if we kind of do this same schmeal down here and change the offset to two. My BIM skills are being dumb today. Ever two. This should give us the other two, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so we've been pulling data out. How about we actually create and save some? How about that? So let's insert a row, shall we? Instead of just pulling them out like we were doing. So to do this, we're going to create a new instance of one of our pilots. Do var uh, p yeah p uh, models dot pilot, and we're just going to start setting the some the the name and stuff. So p dot name equals um, Donnie. Hey, look, I'm a pilot now. So we're going to um we're going to insert this now, and uh. Again, this returns an error, but this was sake of this, I'm throwing the error away. We're going to p dot insert. And we got pass in our context or db. And then this third argument is basically this mode that you can give it to determine how to um, do the insert. If we go check real quick, I can show you insert. And you'll see that uh, the third one argument is one of these four things infer. White list, black list, or gray list. Most of the time, if you're just saying, hey, I just want you to, to stick everything, like uh, use all of the properties this struct has in there, you're going to use uh, infer. But if you say don't want it to insert using a property on that struct, you would use like black list or white list, something like that. So I'm just going to do uh, boil dot infer. Yeah. Would help if I had the right version of the package being imported so that it wasn't screaming at me. Hooray! Okay, so now we got this in here. All we gotta do is just run the bad boy. So, um, after we do this, assuming it doesn't throw a fit, run. Okay, now I'm going to hide these right now. Or just 
Uh, no, well, yeah, we'll, we'll just hide them. And, uh, so it doesn't do that over and over again. So theoretically, when we check this first group of pilots, there should be an extra pilot there now, right? One with, uh, with me in there now. I'm a pilot, hooray. And if you checked, there is indeed a new pilot there. So that is how an example of how you would do an insert. Um, update is the same thing, except the uh, method is called update, not insert. Uh, I think there's there's one called upsert, which kind of does basically uh, if 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 that model if that struct instance has an ID, it ass it assumes that okay, it's already in there. Do an update, um, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, that's really all I wanted to talk about to show an example of how to interact with that with this package. Um, there's uh, there there's so much to cover with this package that. This, if I were to sit here and cover like every single thing, this this shit would take hours. Uh, so you can kind of go through here and, and play with it at your leisure. But this is super nice. Um, all, all you gotta do is point this bad boy at a database that you have, and like assuming there isn't some kind of compatibility issue, like boom, you instantly get pretty easy to use um, ORM code that you can use to interact with it. Oh, and you didn't have to write a single line. That's pretty poggers there, boys. Um, that's all I got for y'all today. Uh, again, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, be sure to check out links in the description to support the channel and find the code that I use to do this stuff. I'll also include the, uh, the database file in the repository in case you want to mess with that too. And with that, y'all come on back now and I'll see you next time.